Hi, harmonica friends! There are a lot of suggestions that can help us making music better through the harmonica. In this video I want to suggest you something that I hope will help you. Let's see the little tricks and tips. The first trick is dedicated to the mouthpiece, a trick that could be useful to some people. It may happen that you have many difficulties slipping the harmonica between your lips. This fact is quite normal, and over time you are going to learn to handle the necessary saliva intake that allow you to keep your lips moist and consequently also the mouthpiece and to slide the harmonica without friction. For many reasons, we could try the unpleasant feeling of dryness that I said before, and this can happen not only due to inexperience, but also to personal characteristics such as poor salivation, as a result redness and the chapping on the lips. It can, it can be helpful to use lubrificants, of course for oral use, that spread in very very small quantity on the mouthpiece greatly reduce the problem even if for a limited time. I recommend the non-tasty but silicone-based lubrificants. In the case of silicone allergy, rare, there are also water-based lubrificants, but they have a decidedly lower yield compared to silicones. You must not abuse lubrificants since they create a condition that is altered, so use it only in case of a real need and in any case get used to managing this condition naturally keeping your lips moist, wetting them with your tongue during musical poses. There are also less obvious tricks, for example if we tilt the torso forward, inwards from the oral cavity, the saliva will naturally flow to the outlet of the mouth and then come in contact with the mouthpiece and then spread out along the instrument when it is moved during our execution. With a certain practice, we can manage lubrification also through this action, but if we exaggerate, we risk drowning the reeds that would suffer for this excess. The contact with the lips must be light pressure, just the necessary to establish the correct adherence and that not allow the hair to escape sideway. All the excess pressure behind this purpose will be not only a source of tension but an increase in friction and adherence to the detriment of the precision and speed of our execution. Another trick is always, if necessary, to bite. Not too gently, the tongue, this action will increase the salivation in a constant way. Try it. I would now like to talk to you about the position of the body. In general, it is common to see the shoulder raise in aspiration by many harmonicists. Every instrumentalist has his own musical expressivity also through the body, the gestures that are part of their way to express themselves but we must distinguish the musical gesture and the wrong assimilation of the movement. In practice, the not knowing how to do otherwise. Let us first get used to playing without further engaging our body with gestures that are not strictly necessary. So we will take advantage of it by channeling our energies. Once we have acquired a correct instrument gesture, we can express that motion that best translate our inner musicality. Raising your shoulder can be a sign of difficulty or worry during the inhalation of the air phase, as if you wanted to increase the possibility of taking in air. 
but if the raising of the shoulder can be evident there could be other less obvious postural vices. They often ask me if it's better to play sitting or standing. I see advantages and disadvantages in both situations. The sitting position is less dynamic and is likely to close and compress the diaphragm, but allow us to get tired less in the case of a prolonged study. Standing with the passing of the hours, we risk to compensate the tiredness with the wrong positions. For example, distributing the weight or propping the weight on a single leg. Unbalancing the body while we should always be able to distribute the weight in a balanced way. I would suggest alternating the study by sitting and standing and getting used to dialing with the such situations. We will have to play looking theoretically to 3-4 meters to the floor in front of us. This position allows us to work anatomically in the best condition and in some cases avoid the saliva excess in the instrument, inevitable if we adopt a two-curved position. Instinctively, we try to put elbow in tie to create a support and a special reference to move the instrument sideways. This position is particularly compromising for the development of the instrumental technique, greatly reducing our mobility and agility and forcing us to involve the head instead of moving the arms and the instrument to reach the nose. We play with arms free and relax without propping on the hips. The instrumental technique precision will reach it with the SSI, memorizing the movement performed by our arms without constraints and impediments. Faced with initial difficulties, it may help to make some objective consideration and adopt an in always positive attitude. It can console us to know that the posture with other instruments can be very complex and before issuing a minimally satisfying sound can spend an important time. For example, the violin where the posture is a real forcing of the body and its anatomy. At least harmonica, it is not so unnatural, and with a bit of constancy and effort, we will be able to acquire our approach and prepare the body correctly. Let us feel free to a certain extent to experiment with the solutions, always trying to incorporate the principles that I have expanded and those that I will point out from time to time, tackling each topic striving only to apply criteria that we understood clearly, not rules. In a short time, probably, you will find yourself adopting, in most cases, the solutions indicated here. Otherwise, it would have not value to indicate a technical solution if they can't be shared by most people. Nevertheless, there will be individual characteristics that may require a small adaptation of some of the rules listed here concerning the setting. Such singularities can be considered and reported here. Only a good teacher can fulfill this task. We are not in a hurry in this first phase. The body and the mind need to memorize and require time. During the study, we stop frequently to avoid stiffening the muscle and creating tension that would reflect on the body and in particular negative way on the mouth embouchure.
my suggestions and answer it to some of your doubts. We try to be constant in our study, better, a little, but every day. Finally, and it is the most important thing, we never forget to have fun and to feel our harmonica like a friend and rejoice in studying and making music always. For the moment, that's all with this tutorial. Have a good music with your harmonica. Ciao!